Guatemala, a small country in Central America, is one of the most violent states on the planet. In the capital, Guatemala City, the homicide rate is 50 times higher than in most of Europe. Street gangs, which they call maras here, are behind much of this slaughter. Villa Nueva is a disadvantaged neighborhood in the capital. Gangs rule these dusty little streets. After several weeks of negotiations, we have managed to infiltrate one of them on an exceptional one-off basis. Underneath his appearance of a good father, Pedro is the local boss of Barrio 18 one of the country's most violent maras. Charged with murder on multiple occasions, Pedro has already served several prison sentences. He rules his area with an iron fist, and today he has an issue to deal with. Pedro has six men under his command and today he will task Christian, his youngest lieutenant, who is still being initiated, to collect the money from the butcher whose payment is overdue. Christian can rely on his teacher's sound advice. Pedro knows all the tricks of the trade. Lo que puedes hacer para que no te echen color los duras, va vos, vas, llegas en la tienda, hace como lo mismo que hacíamos siempre, va vos, sacas tus varas, pides unas chivas y te dan, y que, mientras que te dan, y ahí que te echen los mandados para que la jura no te echen color, que vos vas a ir a recoger rentas, va vos. Vos le decís al vato que ahí te lo echan, va vos, que ellos saben muy bien, si se nos revela a ley, tenemos que matarlos, ¿no? We're going to follow Christian in a car with tinted windows while he pays these favela shopkeepers a visit. First stop, the grocers. Clearly, Christian is already well known in the neighborhood. Without saying a word, the shopkeeper puts the money in the bag. Second stop, another grocers. Then it's the unpunctual butcher's turn. While Christian is doing his round, Pedro is getting ready to set off himself. 
because Pedro is not only the boss of Barrio Dieciocho in the area, he also officially has another much more respectable business. He delivers hot lunches that his wife Maria cooks. Every lunchtime, Pedro walks around the neighborhood to sell his lunches nearby for around $2 each. He makes less than $12 a day doing this, but more than anything, this acts as a cover to avoid the police. Pedro makes the most of his walk around the neighborhood to give us a tour of their holdings. To mark its territory, the gang has covered some walls with graffiti mixing Roman and Arabic numerals. Each Mara has developed its own system of symbols to distinguish it from its enemies. The members of the group unite around this common identity, an identity which they display proudly on their bodies. Nosotros representamos el barrio en donde sea que nosotros caminamos. Representamos el barrio 18, la clica que nosotros seamos. Este es el significado de todos estos puntos y el signo de la telaraña. Este es el signo del barrio 18. La telaraña es el signo del barrio. Vamos creciendo. Así como esta de la vida loca, es el signo que nosotros hemos tenido presos con las grietas en medio. Tattooing is very codified within the gangs. Nosotros no nos podemos tatuar sin la autorización de los meros y la mayoría que se tintean de la cara ya son de los pandilleros más altos que ya tienen su altura ya grandes. Por decirles ya son jefes, ya no son encargados, ya son jefes, ya son los que dan órdenes, ya son los que ordenan ataques. These leaders with tattooed faces are mostly in prison. Some of them have been sentenced to several hundred years imprisonment. But this doesn't stop them from managing their criminal activities from their cells, nor from being responsible for thousands of deaths across the country. Guatemala is one of the poorest countries in the Americas. Situated in North Central America, this small republic of 17 million inhabitants has been led by Jimmy Morales, a former television comedian, since 2016. The president was elected on an anti-corruption campaign. Este 6 de septiembre, ni corruptos ni ladrones. But three years after his term began, nothing seems to have changed in the country. What's worse, Jimmy Morales himself has been accused of illicit financing of his election campaign. Moreover, he has recently expelled the UN anti-corruption mission, which was investigating just a little too close to his case. Guatemala is endlessly plagued by corruption and violence. The country even finds itself among the most dangerous nations on the planet. Over 4,000 murders were recorded in 2018. That's proportionally 20 times more than in most European countries. Barbaric crimes. Dentro de varias bolsas plásticas encontraron restos humanos. Assassination, sometimes in the middle of the street. Behind these killings are the Maras, violent gangs which terrorize the population. Vengan sentados atrás, pum le pasa la arma, se para el chofer atrás del sillón y pim pim en la cabeza. 
In the country, two main gangs, the Mara Salvatrucha and Barrio 18, are fighting to the bitter end. Una vez aquí lo mataron uno y no se moría, puro machete le dieron. They control entire neighborhoods, manage drug trafficking, prostitution, and extortion. Simplemente llega alguien indicándonos que viene por esa cantidad de plata, se entrega y se va. These gangs are often composed of three young members who shoot without mercy. After weeks of negotiations, we have managed to infiltrate their world. The Guatemalan police is poorly equipped to combat these Maras. La institución no, no lo proporciona a uno a cada elemento. So the richest take refuge in ultra secure neighborhoods protected by armed guards. Los clientes normalmente ellos prefieren un arma larga, funcionan como un disuasivo. The poorest have decided to take the law into their own hands by forming militias. Levanten las manos, levanten las manos. At the heart of the most dangerous favelas in Guatemala, we see a portrait of a society subject to the law of gangs every day. In the favela of Villanueva, all the shopkeepers face extortion under the wrath of Pedro. The boss of Barrio 18 in the neighborhood. Christian, his lieutenant, has returned from his weekly round. It's time to tally up the numbers. In total, he has collected 900 quetzals, a little more than 110 US dollars. The money is distributed in very specific proportions. This is lo tuyo. Y este se queda aquí. Esto lo vamos a mandar a los a los líderes. Se queda a los líderes. Entonces el resto ya le di la 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 del muchacho, la que nos pertenece a nosotros. Entonces este resto se queda conmigo y con este resto podemos utilizar para um, comprar recargas, comida, cigarros, consumo de nosotros. Of the $110 collected, Christian keeps $10, Pedro $20, and the rest, $80 US dollars, goes to the gang leaders. Extortion is a godsend for the Maras. It has become their main business asset, ahead of drugs and prostitution. De solo de mi, de mi territorio de aquí, nosotros recogemos semanalmente es unas 5,000 quetzales. De solo la, la, la solo de la mi colonias. En otras colonias nosotros realmente de sobre la clica nosotros recaudamos unos 70, 80 mil. Y si hay la posibilidad hasta recogemos hasta 150 mil semanal. The number of extortions increased by 15% last year. A scorch which mainly hits the poorest who don't have the means to protect themselves. Pedro, however, almost sees himself as a social worker. Nosotros lo llamamos impuestos y la mayoría los llama extorsión. Por lo mismo, como que ustedes estuvieran en un mercado, pagan impuestos con el, la MUNI. Entonces, eso es lo que ellos nos pagan. Porque la MUNI se encarga de hacer limpieza. Entonces, nosotros nos encargamos de hacer limpiezas cuando alguien les viene a chingarlos. Vienen a joderlos a ellos. Nosotros nos encargamos de limpiar a otras pandillas que entren a molestarlos. Si no pagan, ustedes los matan. Before taking charge of Barrio 18 in this industry, Pedro spent 20 years rising up the gang's ranks. As the fourth child of a poor family of 13, he left the countryside as a very young boy to move to the capital in search of a better life. Barrio 18 took him in as soon as he arrived in Guatemala City. A los 12 años empecé I started to do paritos, banderales, 
Y así vamos corriendo los tiempos con ellos. Y de allí, de banderales, llegué a ser soldado. De soldado estoy donde estoy. A los 14 años fue mi primer trabajo. ¿Cuántas personas tú recuerdas de haber asesinado o haberte llevado? Perdí la cuenta. <risa> ah, la verdad, tal vez no, no al mínimo. Ya pasando de los 18, ya era justo. Sí. Within Barrio 18, you need to commit at least 18 murders to claim the title Cesario, or Hitman. Pedro doesn't seem to show any remorse in front of our camera. And while he may be a father to four children, he never backs away from a contract. How do you see in the case of that you're a family and how do you feel in that sense? Well, we don't feel so good, but it's an obligation. Se siente mal de, de, de la familia y todo, pero como te digo, es obligación, obligatorio. Entonces nosotros no podemos venir y, y decir no porque es familia y yo tengo familia, no. Orden y orden. If Pedro refuses to obey, he would be executed by the gang, an impossible situation that Maria has been dealing with for eight years. Como esposa. Como mamá, ¿usted cómo siente y practique esta, esta labor, este trabajo de ella? Pues mal. Pues es, para mí es algo horrendo, porque no somos nadie que para quitarle la vida a otra persona. Pero como ya es su trabajo, pues, que me queda a mí, pues, que solo mirar, oír y callar. ¿va? Sí, eso es lo único. Vivo con, vivimos pues, con temor, yo como esposa con temor, va, que le pase algo y me quede sola. At 32 years old, Pedro is already a near miracle survivor. In the gangs, it's rare for members to live beyond the age of 25. These Maras, which enslaved the country's people, were born in the United States. While Central America was in the grip of civil war during the 70s and 80s, many Hondurans, Salvadorans, and Guatemalans fled to the USA. This illegal and often idle youth took refuge in gangs at the peak of their powers in California. But when the wars in Central America came to an end in the middle of the 90s, the US administration decided to expel all the criminals and illegal immigrants back home bringing with them the practices and attitudes of L.A. street gangs, they re-established themselves in their respective countries and formed all-powerful Maras. Since then, the Guatemalan authorities have struggled to contain the violence. In 2018, the country suffered 3,881 homicides. The justice system and police are overwhelmed by the phenomenon. In Villa Lobos, one of Guatemala's favelas, a small bunker, the central station, has been built at the entrance of the neighborhood. Here, 54 policemen alternate night and day shifts to ensure the security of 75,000 inhabitants. The men live, sleep, and work in these sparse conditions in three fitted-out containers. Marco Antonio has been in post for six years. This is our house. We are the police. How long have you lived here every week? We are 11 days outside, here working. Y descansamos seis días. Prácticamente vivimos más aquí que con nuestras familias. Todo agradecemos a Dios cuando nosotros vayamos a la casa. Ajá, sí, porque todos los policías a veces ya no llegan. Hay momentos que uno en felicidad llega con su familia. Ya al retorno en el trabajo ya no regresan en la casa. Sí, esos es son momentos difíciles que se vive en la vida. The policemen pay a heavy price for the battle against gangs. Last year, 78 of them were killed, which is proportionally 25 times more than in most European countries. To compensate for the risk, 
the industry is fairly well paid, 615 US dollars per month, almost twice as much as the average salary. But on this salary, the policemen have to pay for part of their gear. 125 At the end of the month, the police station's courtyard becomes a weapons market. This former soldier turned weapons salesman offers the policemen everything the administration doesn't provide them. Ellos compran todo lo que es equipo táctico. Chalecos, equipos compactos, cinturones, pierneras. Eh, incluso a veces compran tolvas. Es como ellos compran con su propio dinero. Con su propio dinero, exactamente. Incluso uniformes también. The Guatemalan police lack everything, even the most vital equipment. As the patrol gets ready to go on a mission, only one man is fully kitted out. It's a chaleco antibalas. This is for any event that supports the disparo. Important? Yes, of course, but the institution doesn't provide one to each element. Is it for you? Exactly. Only one bulletproof vest, which the men wear in turns. But also only a single light machine gun among the 54 men. When it comes to vehicles, this 4x4 has been waiting to be fixed for two years, which means the police station only has one car to carry out patrols. Via los un inspector Díaz, diríjase al extremo de buses de la isla, coordinación de tango, por favor. Today, Inspector Carlos, the police station chief, is in charge. Nos encontramos próximos a Lima, próximos al lugar, Florian. Hay un menor de 14 años portando un arma de fuego. Él efectuó disparos por la mañana, entonces se le está dando seguimiento a esa arma porque las mismas son utilizadas para asesinar personas. The shooter is only 14 years old. As is often the case here, wrongdoers are very young. Inspector Carlos has just received confirmation of his address. He lives in an area nicknamed La Isla, right in the heart of the favela. An extremely rundown area controlled by guys from Barrio 18. ¿Cuál será la casa esa? ¿Será no? ¿O será que? Cúbra, cúbrame a alguien ahí. Cúbrame a alguien. That's the house. A half collapsed corrugated iron shack. People no doubt live here. They're still washing drying. The policemen stay alert. The young man with the gun seems to have left the house. The inspector tracks him and makes the most of this visit to La Isla to search the area. Faced with the Mara's violence, lots of the inhabitants have fled the neighborhood, leaving their houses behind. Se revisan todas las casas abandonadas del sector con la finalidad de que las mismas no sean ocupadas por por pandilleros. Se hace una limpieza de todo de todas las casas. Se ve que que no haya pandilleros, drogas o armas de juego ocultas en estas casas. Sometimes these homes serve as a place for executions. A few meters away, Inspector Carlos enters an abandoned house. The policemen have nicknamed it the House of Horror. Six months ago, it was on the front page news. La 
Casa del Terror existe y se encuentra ubicada en zona 12, precisamente en la colonia de Villalobos. ¿Por qué? Bueno, pues que adentro de varias bolsas plásticas encontraron restos humanos. Este hoyo lo realizaron unos pandilleros para enterrar a dos, a dos jovencitas, las cuales habían sido asesinadas, ¿verdad? Y habían sido cortadas en partes. De esta forma en la que en el sector ha desaparecido mucha gente. Muchas veces son miembros de su misma pandilla o son personas que tal vez no quisieron pagar una extorsión o algo. But the Mara savagery did not end here. There is another horror scene in the room next door. Esta es sangre, sangre humana. Disparos de proyectil de arma de fuego. Members of Barrio 18 left a clear warning on this wall. Betraying the gang comes with a very high price. Esta persona es una, era una fémina, la cual tenía una relación sentimental con un pandillero de la otra clica, de la MS, rival de la pandilla 18 de acá. Entonces vinieron los pandilleros del sector y la descuartizaron. The assassins of the young woman have still not been found. The young gunman also seems to have eluded the policeman. Eh, se dio la fuga por la topografía del lugar, la casa en la que ya, la ya se ingresó, que era donde suponía que él estaba, colinda con, con estos barrancos. Él ya se dio a la fuga, pero de igual forma se le está dando seguimiento, se está investigando y eh, tiene que caer. Inspector Carlos is optimistic, but in Guatemala, 95% of homicides are never cleared up and the Maras continue to cause death and destruction in the country. At Verbena Cemetery, funeral processions keep coming day after day. Luis, the grave digger, has a front row seat at the somber procession. Twenty-five burials per day, and most of the victims that Luis buries are barely of age. There are dozens of youthful faces on the tombstones. Son menores de 16, 14 a 18, 19 años, mucho. Sí, es raro el, el ancianito que viene aquí. De ahí son los muchachos de tierna edad. Pues. In the middle of the path, this man gathering his thoughts in front of this grave has lost his four sons. They were less than 25 years old. Mataron el 2 de marzo del 2002, iba a cumplir 18 años. Ahora él iba a cumplir 24. Él tenía ya, también iba a tener los 20, 24. Bien jóvenes los mataron. Sí, hombre, ajá. O sea, que aquí en Guate es, es muy problemático ser así, va, de tener, como le dijera yo, eh, anexos a, a las pandillas, va, porque no los dejan crecer luego. Los jóvenes los quieren matar luego. Son tres los que mataron. Bueno, ya me habían matado uno antes, que está enterrado allá. Por allá se llama Walter. Like his three brothers, Walter was a member of Barrio 18, the same Mara that Pedro is part of. These gangs are responsible for over 2,500 deaths per year in Guatemala. 
If most of the victims are members of rival gangs, others are ordinary citizens who refuse to give in to extortion. Bus drivers are one of the most exposed professions. Oscar is a bus driver in the capital. He has been driving passengers from the Florida neighborhood to the central market for 12 years. And like every morning, he takes to the wheel, filled with fear. If driving a bus is a pretty safe job in most countries, in Guatemala it's one of the most dangerous. Oscar never takes his eye off his wing mirrors. In Guatemala, the news often opens with the assassination of a bus driver. Bien, y tenemos información de última hora. Acribillado a balazos, así mataron a un hombre que en este caso se conducía un bus. Hace algunos minutos fue asesinado un piloto de la ruta 70. Podemos mencionarle acerca de dos ataques al transporte público y colectivo. Terminó el aldeo, terminó el vega, terminó... Last year, 250 drivers and transport employees were shot dead by gang hitmen. Oscar himself almost ended up on the long list of victims. Four years ago, he was attacked while returning to the warehouse. Yo me bajé del bus, me vengo caminando, me vengo para acá atrás, y luego vengo aquí a la esquina del bus, me vengo acá, y vengo, me paro. Yo parado aquí, Miro que sale el tipo, saca el arma, me agarra, pum, 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 me pega cinco balazos en el brazo, seis balazos en el brazo, y me cayeron cinco en la espalda. Yo me cubro para que no me pegara en la cabeza, ¿va? y luego caigo. Eleven body shots in total. Miraculously, Oscar survived after only a week in hospital. But not all his colleagues were so lucky. Iba yo, después siguieron matando. El día, bueno, a mí me tiraron día sábado, a otro chofer le tiraron día lunes, él ya no vivió. Saliendo de su casa, él murió. The Maras rob bus companies when the buses are on the road. And when the companies try to oppose them, the gangs don't hesitate to assassinate their drivers. Oscar got shot at because his boss had refused to pay one of these gangs. Delbis manages this company, which currently has 14 buses. She took up the reins of the business when her husband was killed for refusing to give in to the gang's blackmail. Lamentablemente, hace cinco años, él sufrió un atentado donde perdió la vida. La situación aquí en Guatemala se ha puesto muy crítica, muy dura. La violencia ha crecido de una manera exorbitante. From now on, to save the drivers' lives, Delvis pays in cash. They play the same game every month. Se, aquí lo que se hace es que 
se llega una persona a recibirla que no conocemos, ¿verdad? Eh, solamente nos, nos mandan una nota, nos indican cuánto y listo. Un mes pues, se pueden pagar 100, el otro mes se pueden pagar 200, el otro mes se pueden pagar 300, o sea, no hay una cantidad fija, todo es variable. Si uno no paga, pues es algo complicado, sí es complicado, porque entonces ya le preguntan a uno qué está sucediendo, ¿verdad? ¿Complicado qué significa? Eh, sí, en algunos casos, en algunos casos puede, puede llevar a la muerte ¿verdad? o algún atentado. In the evening, at the end of Oscar's day, he returns to his little house in the poor area of Guatemala. And as soon as he steps through the door, his wife Lupita and his daughters can finally breathe. Ahí se arriesgan, se arriesgan día a día a su vida. Estaría más preocupada porque digo, ay, bueno, que, que, que este, muchas cosas pasan en mi mente ¿va? y eso no, no estoy tranquila. Entonces, hasta aquí no sé, a veces pienso que no sé si, que si era ahí o o algo diferente, yo, no sé, me pongo a pedirle a Dios ¿va? para que Dios nos ayude ¿va? Si, en algún otro negocio. But without any training, Oscar is unlikely to find another job. So he keeps on risking his life every day for $390 per month, the average salary in Guatemala. Faced with the level of violence in the country and the helplessness of public authorities, more and more citizens are choosing to carry a firearm. In the heart of the capital, on Avenue 31 to 45, no more than a dozen shops welcome shoppers all day. Protected behind these metal railings, these shop assistants sell semi-automatic guns as well as pump-action shotguns and even assault rifles. This man has come to buy himself a present. In Guatemala is important de Sí, bastante. ¿Por qué? Bastante. Sirve para cuidar uno sus imagine terrenos, tiene su finca y todo eso. Es importante. Cualquier mañoso. In Guatemala, arms sales have increased by 20% in one year. There are young, old and working people on the sidewalk a few meters from the shop. They're all queuing in the arms control manager's office to obtain a gun permit. And the criteria to obtain one are relaxed, to say the least. Si tú la compras en una armería nueva el arma, tienes que tener tu factura, tienes que traer tu DPI, tienes que traer antecedentes y pena, antecedentes penales y policíacos tienen que estar limpios, tienes que traer tu factura de luz para acreditar exactamente dónde resides o dónde vives. Thanks to flexibilities in the legislation, nearly one Guatemalan in 30 carries a gun or a rifle to protect himself. But some inhabitants go further, choosing to arm themselves, but more importantly, to form civil militias to battle the gangs. The Bacenas neighborhood is in South Guatemala. Every day at the municipal stadium, Alan calls the shots on this turf. He's a professional referee and runs the local championship. But as soon as he steps on the touchline and cleans his boots, Alan retrieves his inseparable companion, a 9mm. On pitch side or in his car, this 34-year-old father never lets it leave his side. 
de 15 años me han gustado las armas, soy fanático de las armas, soy bien fanático a, a todo tipo de armas, ¿verdad? Y, y ya ahorita, gracias a Dios, tengo mi arma, mi arma que a mí me, me gusta, ¿verdad? Que está valorada en 22.500. Alan has put this passion for guns to good use for nearly 15 years to fight against the gangs which are cracking down on the capital. In his neighborhood, this father of four is the head of a citizen's militia. Se empezó a organizar esto cuando mareros vinieron a querer pedir extorsión por niño, cada niño que estaba estudiando en la escuela. Ahí fue donde el grupo se empezó a organizar. Todos los vecinos empezamos a organizar, fue donde decíamos que marero visto, marero muerto, ¿verdad? Porque no somos ni, ni 40 ni 50, somos como unos 500 vecinos que estamos organizados en toda la aldea. Beforehand, the Maras targeted Bacenas, but since the neighbors mobilized, the gangs barely ever venture to the neighborhood. For Johanna, Alan's wife, this is a relief. En otro lado. Les piden hasta donde ya, ¿no? O sea, dice que la casa más humilde les están pidiendo la extorsión. Están ya tiradas a Dios, ¿no? Si se da cuenta, hay mucho comercio, todo es sano. Los niños salen a jugar, no hay peligro de nada. Todo tranquilo, sin pena de nada. Van a estudiar lo mismo. Regresan solos, sin pena de que les vaya a pasar algo. Alan goes out on patrol every night to secure the streets so that the children can play safely in the neighborhood. Twice a week, he takes two of his sons with him, Alan Jr., aged 13, and Jorik, aged 15. Gun with a super battery on the belt, balaclavas or masks to avoid reprisals from the Maras. They're off for a four-hour night patrol. It's 9 p.m. Alan and his sons meet a dozen neighbors. Some of them are shopkeepers, others employees. The youngest still go to school. Some of the patrollers are equipped with a firearm. What type of The public authorities turn a blind eye to these citizens' militias. And according to Alan, all the members of the group who are carrying guns or rifles have a gun permit. For those who don't have a license, the money, or aren't legally old enough to carry a firearm, the patrol gets by with what is available. Machetes, baseball bats, or golf clubs. After five minutes on patrol, as they approach the main square of the neighborhood, First alert. After a thorough search, the patrol end up finding something. Hierba, marihuana. No me putas compraste eso. ¿Cómo te van a regalar esa mierda? ¿Qué putas vamos a echar? No, no se les ha dicho que no fuimos en esta mierda aquí vamos a echar en el campo. Disculpe, muchachos, pero disculpe, no de sí. Siempre la misma mierda cagando a ustedes. No, disculpen, disculpen, ya no vamos a robar mejor. Vuelen a la verga, ven, vuelen a la verga. Hierba, marihuana. Cannabis is illegal in Guatemala. After having confiscated it, Alan sends the three young boys home. Half an hour later, 
the patrol interrogates someone else. Once again, two young people smoking joints. They shoot off without a fuss. Allen's men rejoin another group of patrollers. They have set up a checkpoint at the entrance to the favela. You need to identify yourself to go into Bacenas at night. The citizens' militia has set up five checkpoints like this one to control access to the neighborhood. The strategy seems to have paid off as insecurity has significantly diminished for Barcenas inhabitants. But sometimes the Mara still manage to pull off raids. Last July, three men attacked a delivery truck on 6th Street, resulting in three casualties. A CCTV camera filmed the scene. During the attack, one of the attackers sent a message to Allen's militia. The group has already paid a heavy price for fighting the gangs. In the past three years, five patrollers have been killed by the Maras. These images, shot in a cemetery, show men from the militia firing bursts of gunshots in tribute to one of their own, the day he was buried. In the neighborhood, thanks to the patrollers' work, life continues late into the night. While in the capital, the streets empty as soon as night falls, in Barcenas, no one thinks of seeking refuge at home. The shops stay open, and residents even take the time to go for a stroll, free from fear. Salsa. Shopkeepers like this grocer love what the militia is doing. But this security is not free of charge. Allen's group demand a contribution from the shopkeepers, around $4 per week. Some have criticized it for being a form of extortion, but the amount remains roughly 10 times lower than the extortion the Maras demand. It means peace, too. Barcenas inhabitants should be able to sleep easy for years to come, because new generations of patrollers will continue their work. <laughs> At 13 years old, Alan Jr. wants to follow in his father's footsteps. While the state struggles to exert authority on its own land, the citizens' militias have gone from strength to strength in Guatemala. The country will rely on them for many decades to come. But the Maras are also recruiting a plenty. Without future prospects in a country where more than one inhabitant out of two lives below the poverty line, many teenagers embrace the gang's vida loca, this life of violence, murders and burglaries within a close-knit group which acts as a replacement for family. To meet young gang members, we solicited the help of an intermediary who introduces himself as a convert. This is the man wearing a hat whom we call Mario. He has kept close ties with certain members of Barrio 18. <coughs> <clears throat> 
Fifteen minutes after Mario called, four youths pull up in a customized car. The youths are skeptical, but after half an hour of negotiations, Mario manages to convince them. They agree to drive us to their squat for an interview. Two girls and four boys, all around 20 years old, are in an unimpressive studio at the back of a courtyard. These young members of Barrio Dieciocho have dreamed of joining the gang since they were very little. In a few years, these youths have risen up the ranks of the gang to the top. From paras, mere collaborators, they have become soldados or cisarios, hitmen. The youths who have chosen to go down the gang route talk with a sense of fatalism and resignation. The only thing that matters for these youths today is the vida loca, friends, beers and rap, to forget about life's troubles. The Marrero's crazy life usually ends up in prison or in a graveyard. Few emerge from the gang unscathed. La Limonada is one of the most violent favelas in the capital. This is the metal and concrete jungle where we have a meeting with a Barrio Dieciocho convert. Christian is 28 years old and he is paraplegic. Today he's no longer independent. He lives with his parents and his brother and his nurse. Christian's Vida Loca ended abruptly one day in July 2010. As he was robbing a bus, he took a bullet in the spinal column. The gangs ruined his life. Yo buscaba tal vez como un, un, un refugio en ellos, pues, y, y me gustaba la forma que se vestían. Les quería imitarlos, ¿verdad? Entonces, nunca me imaginé que el entrar a, ahí a la, a la pandilla, entrar al barrio, pensé que me iba a ocasionar tantos problemas en, en mi vida. Ahora, si quieres jalarte una, una sillita de aquí, mira, para que tiene tu, tu esposa también ahí. Christian left Barrio Dieciocho after his injury, but he continues the craft which earned him a reputation in the gang, tattooing. Fíjate que lo único que y los colores en otros los voy a poder tirar va a ser lo que todo sombreado, así como hasta aquí, todo negro así. ¿Por 
Some of Christian's clients come and see him for a very particular reason. They are former gang members who want to hide the distinctive body tattoos they are wearing. Christian makes the tattoos disappear to erase the Marrero's difficult past. But he has gone further in his battle against the gangs in the last two years. Christian, his father Otto and the rest of the family cook every Sunday. They prepare lunch for 15 or so kids from the neighborhood. On today's lunch menu, with a tasty meal, Otto and Christian offer the children from the neighborhood a few hours of respite, far from the violence of the streets. A little moment of attention and human kindness to show them that you can live and make friends without belonging to a gang. Todos estos niños que, que tenemos aquí con, con uno de ellos, este poquito, el papá de él estuvo conmigo, yo lo conocí. El papá murió hace años, lo dejó pequeñito. Y en un momento el, el niño se acercó y me dijo, yo quiero ser igual que mi papá. Quiere ser matón, quiere ser sicario. Pero eso es lo que tratamos la manera de, de evitar aquí con los niños, pues de que sigan siempre ese mismo proceso, ese mismo ejemplo de lo, que, de lo que tuvieron ellos un día, ¿verdad? Tratar la manera de, de sembrar ya algo mejor en ellos. Civic initiatives like this one by Christian and his family, together with public efforts by police and law enforcement, seem, little by little, to be bearing fruit. In Guatemala, the number of homicides has decreased by 12% in one year.